eloped were and were married in Afton in January of 1827. Joseph Knight often lent them his sleigh so that they could visit each other. What I'm putting on the screen here shows a little bit more about uh, the area. Um, and I uh, hope you're able to, to visit there as well. During that time, 1925 to 1929, Joseph Smith would visit frequently and tell them about the visions, plates, translation, priesthood restoration um, in May and June of 1829, and persecutions. Also during that time, September of 1827, Newell's father Joseph and friend Josiah Stoll stayed with the Smiths in Palmyra when Joseph and Emma received the plates and Joseph Knight Sr. helped with the provisions during the translation. From Newell's journal, during this time, we were frequently visited by my young friend, Joseph Smith, who would entertain us with accounts of wonderful things which had happened to him. It was evident to me that great things were about to be accomplished through him, that the Lord was about to use him as an instrument in, the hands, in his hands to bring to pass the great and mighty work of the last days. So honest and plain were all his statements that there was no room for any misgivings with me on the subject. Besides, I found reading and searching the Bible that, were, that there would be a great falling away from the gospel as preached and established by Jesus and his apostles, that in the last days God would set his hand again to restore that which was lost. Then why should anyone persecute this boy? I could not, yet to my certain knowledge, many did. Tuesday, April 6, 1830. Church of Jesus Christ, organized in Peter Whitmer's house in Fayette, 100 miles from Colesville as the crow flies and about two hours as the car drives. 60 people attended, about 20 of whom were from the Knights' extended family. We don't know who all was there, but based on past and subsequent events and journal writing, it is safe to say that Newell was there. April 1830, Joseph Smith went to Colesville to teach and testify in a neighborhood meeting of soon to be believers and some non believers. Having invited people to pray about what he had taught them, Newell was uncomfortable praying vocally and in front of others, and so tried to pray at home. This is when he was met with much opposition from evil spirits and asked that Joseph come to him and cast the devil out of him. A miracle occurred when Joseph Smith cast the devil, the evil spirit out, and Newell uh, subsequently had a personal vision of his own and was healed and was able to pray. Newell was baptized in the last week of May in Fayette by David Whitmer, and he was the first LDS baptized member of the Knight family and 27th member of the new Mormon church. He attended the first conference of the church on the first day of June, when again, he had a personal vision of the future of the church and his own future when he would be admitted into the Lord's presence. Newell understood the importance and the reasons for the visions and revelations that those early saints experienced. Then after the conference, the prophet Oliver Cowdery and the Whitmers went to Colesville to baptize many and experienced some persecution as well. In the 1st of August, Newell and his wife visited Joseph in Harmony so that Sally and Emma could be con confirmed and partake of the sacrament. They were unable to do so previously when they were baptized due to the persecutions. It was at this time that Joseph received a revelation uh, in Doctrine and Covenants to only use new wine, perhaps grape juice um, of their own make instead of using uh, wine made by someone else. Newell also attended the church second conference in Fayette in early September 1830. After that conference, Joseph Smith's brother Hiram and Hiram's wife Jerusha came to live with Newell and Sally in Colesville. And Hiram was made first president of uh, Hiram Smith was made first president of the Colesville branch, the first official branch of the church. Newell and Hiram were mission companions in the greater Colesville area. Most of their success was with Newell's mother's uh, peck relatives. Noel's first use of the priesthood power to bless others was when he cast an evil spirit out of his Aunt Martha, uh, Patty, Peck's, uh, Patty Peck, who was Hezekiah's wife, on October 15, 1830. There would be many other times he would use the priesthood to heal. During the third conference of the church in January 1831, they were instructed to gather Israel and the Colesville Saints began preparations soon after and departed their home with or without sale of their property in April. Colesville Branch, made up mostly of Knight relatives, first settled in Thompson, Ohio, 25 miles northeast of Kirkland on the lands of Lehman Copley, a recent convert from the Shakers. 
But after Newell attended the church's fourth conference in early June of 1831, the Coesville branch was forced to leave when Brother Copley broke his promise and reverted back to being a shaker and left the church. A revelation was received following the conference that instructed the Colesville branch to settle in Zion, Jackson County, Missouri. And so as a group, they all moved west and arrived in Independence on July 25th, 1831. Noel's mother, Polly, was not well, but her greatest desire was to set foot in the land of Zion. Noel built a coffin on the way there in preparation for his mother's passing. Not long after arriving, Noel's mother, Polly, died on August 6th. Newell and the Knights were part of many firsts in Zion, such as being one of the 12 men to help lay the first log for a building foundation in Zion. There is a monument erected showing that event. He was also one of eight men invited to be present when the temple site just west of Independence was dedicated. Independence was a frontier town and much different way of life and brand of people than New England. I'll go forward a few slides here since I passed over Kirtland. These slides, by the way, are also in the uh, night road trip class. So if you'd like to, to, show, to see that class, you'll get more information. From Newell's journal, on April 6th of April, 1833, the church met together at the ferry on the Big Blue River to celebrate the church's birthday. Three years ago today, he said, and the church consisted of but six members, met together in a private house, and this was the foundation of the kingdom of our God, which is to spread forth until it fills the whole earth. And although Satan and all hell may wage war against it, yet they cannot overcome it. But it shall take rule and dominion, for it is the Lord's work, and none can stay his hand. They encountered many problems in Missouri at the hands of ignorant and violent men who formed mobs to intimidate, injure, and even murder people they felt were a threat to their way of living. These stories seem very familiar to me to those in the Book of Mormon when people persecuted the believers. One story has a good ending, however, um, during that time, and that was of the priesthood blessing Newell gave Philo Dibble, who was shot in the stomach with multiple lead balls. Following the blessing, Philo's pain went away and he discharged blood and the balls and slept well that night and was in good shape to travel the next day. In September of 1834, Noel's wife Sally and their youngest son, Eli, died. Left, Noel left to go back to Kirtland not long after to help finish the construction of the Kirtland Temple. While living there, he stayed with his friends Hiram and Jerusha Smith in their boarding house. In October of 1835, Lydia Goldthwaite arrived in Kirtland and also stayed at Hiram's, at Hiram's house. Lydia's story is a remarkable story of endurance, patience, and faith. Having been married to an abusive man she met at school and having lost two children, she left and went to Mount Pleasant, Canada to stay with friends, the Nickersons. While there, Joseph, while there, Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery visited the home and taught them and their neighbors. Many felt the spirit and were converted and baptized. Lydia was among them and eventually left Canada and traveled to Curlin to be with the saints. Staying in the same house, Lydia met Newell. After discussing the legalities of marriage with each other and with Joseph Smith, Lydia agreed to marry Newell and Joseph. Uh, and Joseph, being a religious leader, was able to marry them on November 24th, 1835. Newell was part of another first in the church this time, and their vows were very meaningful. When the Kirtland Temple was finished, Newell and Lydia were both able to be present at the dedication of the temple and the conference afterward, and they experienced wonder, the wonderful outpouring of the Spirit. May 6, 1836, Lydia and Newell arrived back in Missouri, but it wouldn't be long until the persecution was too much for the saints, and they again were forced to leave, this time to Nauvoo and surrounding parts along the Mississippi and Illinois. I had heard the Newell being needed to build a, build a mill in Nauvoo was asked to move bef even before uh, some of the violence in Missouri reached its climax, and so he and his family avoided additional injury. The Nauvoo years of 1839 through 1846 were hard. The mill business was a demanding one. Capital expenses involved in getting a mill up and running was a hard part for a family that had started over so many times since joining the church a decade earlier. 
the mills were more complicated because it was family business and working with his brother and father sometimes led to family conflicts, which were enormously stressful for men who longed for family unity. Joseph Knight Sr. by this point was too old to be involved in the actual labor of the mills and Newell was the source of support for his 70 year old father and his father's second wife Phoebe and their son who was about five when they arrived in Nauvoo. When Newell and Lydia arrived in Nauvoo, they had three small children, Samuel, Sally, and James, and four children more were born there, Joseph, Newell, Lydia, and Jesse. This was a busy season of life, made much more complicated by angry people who hated the Mormons. Newell had served on the High Council in Kirtland and the Zion Stake in Missouri, and he was again called in Nauvoo to serve on the 12-man High Council, serving under William Marks, who was stake president. He was very involved in church service. The photo in the, uh, the bottom right uh, shows what uh, uh, was most likely Noel's house. And there's a plaque there now in Noel that uh, where, or near, near the place where he had his mill. Newell was devastated when Joseph and Hiram were killed. Hiram had been, in, had been Colesville Branch president before that job was turned over to Newell. Newell and Hiram had knocked doors together back in Broome County, New York, on brief missionary forays. Newell and Lydia had been married in the home of their friends, Hiram and Jerusha. And of course, Joseph was Newell's beloved friend. Joseph, Joseph Smith was Newell's beloved friend and revered prophet. From Newell's journal, they died as they had ever lived, faithful and true to that God who has now, who has them now, uh, excuse me, who has now them as his servants to build up the church and kingdom in the last days. In the hour of prosperity, they taught the people humility and meekness. In the hour of persecution, they practiced these virtues, and no men have ever done a greater work, uh, greater working the earth since the days of the Savior than they have, and their names will ever be held in honorable remembrance by the lovers of truth, virtue, integrity, justice, and righteousness. Oh, how I love these men and rejoiced under their teachings. It seemed as if all is gone, as if my heartstrings will break. And were it not for my beloved wife and dear children, I feel as if I have nothing to live for. I would rejoice to be with them in the courts of glory, but I must live and labor and try to do, as, do good and help to build the kingdom of God here on the earth. And I pray to God, my Father, that I may be reconciled unto my lot and live and die a faithful follower of the teachings of our prophet and patriarch. Regarding the temple, on May 24th, Newell wrote, the capstone of the temple was laid this morning, a little past six o'clock. And after a little bit more than four years of hard labor of, from the saints, during which time we have passed through scenes of persecution too, too great to be painted by man. This morning was cool, clear, and beautiful. The saints rejoiced while the band poured forth its sweetest strains of music upon the tops of the walls, and all hearts rejoiced in the hope that the wrath of our enemies might be stayed until the building shall be completed and the faithful receive their endowments therein. Newell and Lydia did receive their endowments and were sealed before they left Nauvoo. April 24, 1846, Newell wrote about their leaving. About noon, we ascended the bluff from the Mississippi and halting, took a fast, last fond look at the lovely city we had helped to build up from its very foundations, and also of the magnificent temple which stands there, rearing its lofty towers towards heaven, a monument to the wisdom and greatness of our martyred prophet, and an honor to those whose skill, industry, perseverance, and undying devotion reared the holy house with the sword in one hand and the trowel in the other. We also took a farewell look at the comfortable houses we had worked so hard to build for the comfort of our beloved families. Whilst beholding and pondering on all these things, I felt grateful to my Heavenly Father and acknowledged my dependence on Him and asked for His protecting care to be over us on our unknown journey. May 25th, 1846, while visiting with Brigham Young in the Camp of Israel at Mount Pisgah, Iowa, Newell learned that Brigham wished Newell to travel with others to go over the Rocky Mountains that summer to build a mill there for the use of the saints to come later. Ill-prepared as Newell was, he said he could go as instructed, never looking back. Such was Newell's uh, personality. His father died in Mount Pisgah on February 2nd, 1847. His oldest son, Samuel, was able to go on to Utah with another group. 
August 13th to 23rd, Newell and the com companies traveled about uh, traveled north to the vicinity of the Ponca Indian Camp, near where the Niobrara River empties into the Missouri, just a few miles south of the present Nebraska border with South Dakota. Still a church leader, Newell continued to instruct and plead with his fellow saints to be worthy of the blessings they so desperately needed. In his last address to his branch, he says, I also told them we must cleanse not only our hearts, but also our bodies, our garments, our habitations, and all things around that we may have claim upon the angels of heaven and upon his presence to go before us. But my hand is awkward in writing so that I cannot tell all that is said. But my mouth was filled with words of exhortation to the people. On returning home, I told my wife I did not know how the brethren would receive it, but I felt easy and knew that I had spoken the words that the Lord put into my mouth, and if the brethren will lay hold to profit by them, it will save them trouble that otherwise await them. After taking quite sick on January 4th, Noah lasted but a week, probably dying of pneumonia. His wife Lydia finished out his journal and also spoke of a vision that she had of, of Newell visiting her one evening, telling her to be at peace, that everything would be okay, and that he was needed on the other side of the veil to help Joseph. During the three years, <clears throat> during the three years after Newell died, Lydia taught school, did various jobs to support her family, sold or actually gave her wagon to others who were ready to travel west, and had to wait till it was her turn to take her family to Utah in 1850. After arriving in Utah and reuniting with Samuel, Lydia was asked to enter into plural marriage with John Dalton, who helped support her and her children, but she did not enjoy this arrangement and separated from him a year later. Then in 1864, Lydia married James McClellan and Payson, and then moved to St. George, where she worked in the temple until her death in 1884. Now I'll just uh, do a, a, a summary of their children. Samuel Knight was born in Caw Township, Jackson County, Missouri in 1832. After having moved to Utah, he was asked to be a missionary in Southern Utah among the native Indian tribes and to promote peace between the Native Americans and the pioneers. Carolyn will talk more about Sally and Samuel um, in just a minute. The first, uh, there, Lydia's first child, excuse me, the first child of Lydia, Sally was born in Davies County, Missouri in 1836. After moving to Utah, she married Zamira Palmer in 1851 and had 12 children. She lived in Heber and Nevada and then moved to Orderville where she lived the rest of her life. James Philander was born in Far West in 1838. After moving to Utah, he became a farmer and trader, married Elizabeth Jones and had 14 children, nine of whom lived to adulthood. He lived in San Pete County and Payson. Joseph Ether was born in Nauvoo in 1840. After moving to Utah, he married Jane Judd and they raised seven children, living in Nevada, Anguish, and finally ending up on the Navajo Reservation in Arizona after being called on a mission there. Newell Jr. was born in Nauvoo in 1842, and after having moved to Utah, married Jane Loveless and had seven children. His son Jesse Jasper also had two children in Provo and moved to California. His, Jesse's son Goodwin Knight, became governor of California. Known as Goody Knight, he was well -like, a well-liked governor and during his time was part of the grand opening of Disney, Disneyland, where he gave an opening address. See his Goodnight story online. Lydia Jr. was born in Nauvoo in 1844. She married John Ray Young and they had seven children and lived the law of consecration for a few years in Orderville. About 1890, they moved to Chihuahua, Mexico to escape persecution as a polygamist, but came back to attend the Salt Lake Temple dedication. Her brother Jesse helped her have a comfortable home in Mexico where she died. Jesse Knight, my great, my great, great grandfather was born in Nauvoo in 1845. As a five-year-old, he crossed the plains and his family settled in Payson, where they lived poorly. As a strong-willed person, he worked hard, found jobs, and married Amanda McEwen, who tried to keep him active in the church. After some hard lessons he learned about being faithful, he turned his life over to God and became well-known in Utah for mining, sugar beet mills, railroad building, and settling the towns of Knightsville and Raymond, Alberta. He was also well-known for his benevolence and supporting the church, families, and creating jobs. 
he invested in many companies, even some that were not doing well, but that employed people in times of need. What was left of his wealth, he gave to support the BYU Academy and purchasing land that BYU would be built on. He also erected a monument to his mother, Lydia, in St. George, and to his father, Newell, in Niobrara, Nebraska, which still stands today. He and many of his family are buried in Provo. Hiram Knight, the youngest, was born in winter quarters in 1847, and he died at 33 years in Payson without record of having been married. The information that I just gave came from Family Search. Now I'm going to turn some time over to Sally, excuse me, to Carolyn, um, to talk about uh, Noel's wife, Noel's wife Sally, and their son Samuel, and uh, and what happened with him in Southern Utah. After which we'll play. Uh, Boyd's uh, talk about uh, his Jesse Knight book. All right. Can, can you hear me, James? I can. Okay. Um, I appreciate what James has presented. It was a great overview. Um, I am uh, a descendant, as he said, of Samuel. Uh, Samuel is my great great grandfather. I come through Samuel's daughter. Lenora uh, to my grandfather, A.K. Hafen, and then my dad to me. Um, I thought I would just kind of divide my presentation into three parts, uh, a little about his ancestry, an overview of his life, and then uh, some interesting things at the, the end of his life. Um, a lot of you that have kind of followed family history, I think, on this side of the family, um, know some about his mother's ancestry. Um, of course, we know a lot about Newell's ancestry, and there's been a lot given already of that. Um, but his mother is probably a little less widely known. Um, for a while, it was a question as, as to how to spell her last name, and through some research, through uh, Newell's journal as well as uh, Sally's sister, Emily. Um, it, the correct spelling is without the L, C-O-B-U-R-N. Um, I was able to take some uh, other ancestry ideas from Emily's book. Uh, she wrote a book, Life Among the Mormons. Um, Emily was the younger sister of Sally and um, she married Clark Slade, who is Newell's cousin, through the Slade side of, of the Colesville branch. Um, so some interesting things that I found out from her book is that their um, grandfather, Thomas Lyon, uh, fought and died in Canada in the War of 1812. Um, and so he was relatively uh, well known uh, for that part of his life. Um, as already mentioned, their father, Amariah Colburn, uh, was a musician. Emily mentions that they would even have theatrical performances at their house and then return home to the marching of drums uh, into their home when they were done with their theatrical performances. Um, Emily describes Sally uh, in one instant where she was leaving to go to a party with their uh, oldest brother, Essek. And this is how Sally is described. She was dressed in blue silk, trimmed with white lace, a gold chain and watch, a pink rose in her light auburn hair, which was inclined to curl bright and wavy. So that gives us some idea a little about Samuel's mother and, and her side of the family. Um, the next part that I kind of wanted to go over is Samuel's life. And I took this from a book written in 1960 uh, by my grandfather, A.K. Hafen. It is posted on Family Search in the entirety. So if you would like to, if you're from um, 
Samuel, you'd like to go read through that. He does have have it all online. Um, as was mentioned, Samuel was born in 1832 in Missouri, and because of all the incidents that were happening there, he went through a lot before he was even um, 14 years old when his when his father died. Um, there were mobs. There was a lot of leaving homes. Uh, I'm sure a lot of fear that he felt as a as a young child. Um, two years when he was two years old, his mother died, and he was left in the care of of his mother's sister Emily. Newell went to Kirtland, where he remarried and returned uh, when Samuel was three and a half. Um, Emily describes in her book that that she was, uh, when Newell came back, she was relieved of the duty of taking care of this interesting little boy. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what, what she meant by that, but I'm sure, as most of you know, uh, two-year-olds and three-year-olds can be a handful. Um, he lived through at seven years old, um, seeing Joseph and Hiram arrested in Far West, where, where later they were then taken to Liberty Jail. And then at 11, um, he heard about their death at Carthage. Um, and so I think uh, probably if any of us today went through what he did, we would immediately be told that uh, we needed therapy. And um, I, I look at Samuel and think about him being um, strong and faithful and, and going through those things and enduring those. It really makes me realize that three months in my home because of COVID has been nothing. So. Um, after uh, his father died, uh, he at 14 uh, went ahead of, of Lydia uh, and the rest of the children to the Utah Valley. He arrived in September of 1847. Uh, in the note that my grandfather, the book that my grandfather wrote, he, he wasn't real sure uh, what his duties were, but I found um, an entry for the the uh, Jubilee um, uh, celebration in Utah in uh, 1897. And on there, Samuel made a mention that he drove for the Wixom and Elridge group. Uh, and, and when I looked up further information, he was actually in the second group of 10 of that wagon train. And there was a, a, a man named Wixom and a man named Eldridge. So, I'm pretty sure that's what he, he was doing. He was helping them drive the wagons to Utah. Um, once he got here, he was kind of deserted uh, and left, left for a while on his own until his bishop helped him out. So for three years, he was in Utah before Lydia came. At 21 years old, he was called to be uh, a missionary uh, to Southern Utah, as has already been stated, uh, to the Native American Indians. So pretty much that's where um, Samuel lived. That's where he settled. Um, I think you're seeing probably still James Screen. There was a picture there at the top. of uh, I think that's Charlie's Museum in Santa Clara. There's a great museum by Charlie Clayton. Uh, in Santa Clara, Utah, um, southern part of Utah, that has a lot of uh, interesting memorabilia in and dedicated, obviously, to Samuel. Um, Samuel married three times. Um, he only had children by the first and second wife. Uh, the first wife, he had six girls. The second wife, he had six boys and four girls. And as I looked at kind of their descendants. A lot of them have settled in Southern Utah, um, one family, Arizona, and, and I think another California, but a lot uh, stayed and settled um, in Southern Utah. And um, that is where my dad's from. Um, most of his family's from down there. 
Um, but there was one thing that I noticed in my grandfather's book. He wrote about a trip that was taken in 1907. And this was to go back to Niobrara um, with, to help with, or to see, I don't know if that was the exact day they installed the monument. James would probably know that. But um, in 1907, Samuel was 74 years old. And he traveled with his, his um, half-brother, Jesse Knight, who was 62. With them were uh, two young ladies, 31 and 32, uh, one Jesse's daughter, Inez, and his daughter-in-law, Jenny Brimhall. Um, and I'm sure those things are very familiar to a few of you as they were the first sister missionaries. Um, also with them was Jenny's father, George H. Brimhall, who at the time was 55. Um, and that trip, I'm sure, wasn't easy. As I was thinking, it's probably train and then wagon with a horse-drawn wagon or carriage of some kind. Cars were not a real big thing, although I don't know. Maybe maybe by then Jesse had a car. I don't know. <laughs> but um, my grandfather relates that Inez kept a day-to-day -day journal of that experience and um, I don't know if anybody has that. I don't know if it's still out there. But she relates that um, when they were at the Ponca Indian uh, settlement, um, Samuel told them about loading his mother into a wagon to go back to Council Bluffs. And then she, Inez also says that Samuel was filled with emotion when they visited the place where his father died. And um, they went on then to have a, a nice little trip. I think it said they went to Carthage. And uh, so all of those childhood memories, um, just coming back to life and, and, and kind of tying his life together, I guess, uh, at the end of his life. Um, so I thought it was interesting that he and Jesse were, were kind of together there and, and ha were doing things together. And so I'm looking forward to uh, Boyd's book about Jesse, and, and hopefully uh, when that gets published, I'll be able to get a copy of that. Anyway, thanks, James. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, am I the one showing uh, Boyd's video? Either you or John. I've, I've got it ready if you need me. Great, thank you. But you'll need to end your screen share. Winston Churchill said, Writing a book is an adventure. To begin with, it's a toy and an amusement. Then it becomes a mistress, and then it becomes a master. Then it becomes a tyrant. The last phase is that just as you are about to be reconciled to your servitude, you kill the monster and fling him to the public. This quote hangs above my desk as a reminder that as a writer, I am in good company when the going gets rough. My desire is that you will find hope, inspiration, and excitement as you read this book. The book will be titled, Uncle Jesse, The Vision to See, The Courage to Do. In this book, you will find familiar stories written by members of the Knight family, including J. Will, Jenny Mangum, and Inez Allen. With the modern day advantage of the internet, I've been blessed with access to historic new newspapers as well as many pioneer, journey, pioneer journals. 
To enhance the stories, I have included copies of historical documents and over 180 photos. Some of the documents from family files have never been made public. The endless flow of new information has generally been a blessing, but sometimes a curse. Just when I think I'm at the end, new stories come out of the woodwork. Okay, once complete, the book will contain 26 chapters. The first three chapters are titled Escape from Extermination, Trials on the Trail in Life in Salt Lake Valley. They include a brief history of Jesse's family, the Knight family, and other members of the restored church as they endured trials in Kirtland, Missouri, and Nauvoo before they fled to Salt Lake Valley. Jesse, as a child, wanted to, uh, tried hard to relieve the burdens of his widowed mother, Lydia. And when Jesse matured, his job hauling freight led him into mining camps and other wild outposts of the West. Over time, he adopted some habits of the Gentiles. Though never immoral, he smoked, drank, and enjoyed gambling. Those habits haunted him for much of his life after, he, after his miraculous conversion. <clears throat> While serving on the BYU Board of Directors, he gave simple but powerful warning advice to students about the evils of those habits and the blessings of being a faithful church member being generous and paying an honest tithe. The book includes excerpts from those talks. I develop a deep love and appreciation for Jesse's wife, Amanda, because of her faith, her industry, and her refining influence on Jesse. In spite of, cha of challenges, Jesse and Amanda enjoyed a lot of humor with each other and their children. Included in the book are some delightful examples of their interactions. You'll find stories of their family trials and patience as told by Jesse to be very touching. This was a life-changing time for everyone in the family, but especially for Jesse, who endured the agony of watching his sick children, the one who died. And he, I also experienced a total conversion to God at this time. The story of the humbug mine has often been told and repeated. Jesse that he was guided to this discovery through voices and visions. I discovered in my research that as he related his visions, a doctor tried to get him committed to the insanest program. The chapter titled Life in the Mines will take you down in the mines and see the tools they use, the process of mining, and appreciate the courage of miners who risk their lives every day. Jesse worked hard to ensure the safety of his miners. Jesse owned multiple mines in the West. His ability to find ore earned him the title, the Mormon wizard. Because he was a Mormon, he was often blackballed by the other mine owners. When faced with opposition, he responded by building his own railroads, his own smelters, and the others. When suppliers tried to overcharge him for coal, he started his own Beyond mining, he built seven electrical power plants, several settler smelters and mills, two railroads, three sugar factories. He revived the wool mill, rejuvenated an opera house, and rescued Duchesne farmers with a massive irrigation project. He planned, financed, and built three communities, each governed by rules that forbade behavior destructive to families. His first was Nightville. Jesse's wealth came at a time when the Mormon church was in deep financial trouble and BYU was struggling to survive. His donations saved the credit of the church reputation of some of its leaders. The survival of BYU was assured through the generous donations of land and financing from the Jesse Knight family. It is my conviction that Jesse was chosen by the Lord to be in a position to come to the rescue at this critical time. Jesse and family influenced the architectural landscape of, landscape of Poland, leaving monuments with each stone. The night block, five night homes are listed 
With his newfound wealth, Jesse expanded his empire. His vision to and claims to be carried north to Canada and south to Columbia, where he acquired massive acres of land to develop. Jesse played the following quote by President Orlando Snow. It became his driving force. Quote, men and women of wealth, use your riches to give employment to the labor. Unlock your vaults, unloose your purses, and embark on enterprises that will give work to the unemployed and relieve the wretchedness that leads to vice and crime. Make others happy, and you will be happy yourselves. Here are a few of the many pictures you will find while reading the book. Amanda's wild ride down Main Street in Payson with her house coat flying and her pantaloons showing. Miners crammed into a mine cage were lowered hundreds of feet deep into the earth. The school built by Jesse in his mining town of Knightville. A check from Jesse to the church for $100,000 countersigned by Lorenzo Snow. Today, that amount would be equal to a little over $3 million. Night Spring Canyon Coal, it was too hot for the devil. It burned too hot for the devil. Springville Mapleton Sugar Company, where they turned beets to sweet. Ten pound sugar sack from Springville Mapleton Sugar Company. We hope you will feel as close to Uncle Jesse while reading this book as we did while writing it. Back to you. Okay, so yeah, we're excited to, to have that book come out. Um, it's kind of going through its last hurdle of legal review as, as uh, documentary type books do, just to check that everything is, uh, is good to go. Um, but uh, I believe BYU uh, Publishing will be printing it as soon as that is ready, and we will keep you posted. So we, we thank Boyd. I don't know if Boyd is on right now, but we appreciate his, uh, his doing that for us. Um, there's also been some comments uh, some in the chat room about Noel Knight's monument in Niobrara. And uh, just to reiterate what Edie said, um, that uh, most recent um, observation is, is that it's still there. Um, there were people able to, to take a drone in when they weren't able to drive and I believe it's probably accessible now. And it wasn't accessible for quite a, a while, and so nobody really knew what its status was. Um, I had looked at some video of when the flooding occurred, and to me it looked like it was just barely outside of the, uh, the threat of the flood. So anyway, uh, if any of you go and, and visit it, please take some pictures and post those on Facebook. So I believe right now um, we are opening uh, this up. Um, we, we're actually came to the end of our hour but we started a little bit a little bit late but you're all welcome to stay as long as you'd like um uh to talk and ask questions and share stories and then i believe it is at one o'clock um that there is a uh, there's a book review that Edie will be hosting about the new and night journal book so i'll i'll just open that up uh, if you can Unmute, you, unmute yourself, I believe, and uh, say whatever you'd like to say or ask. People are interested. I do have the, the stats of, for all of those who filled out which child you came through. Uh, I can show those or, or go over those with you if you want to know those, but it's kind of fun and interesting to see who we all we have joining. We have just about someone from everyone from of 
of Newell's uh, children and grandchildren joining us today. So that was way exciting. And I would be happy to show those if you guys want to see those or if you just want to. Yeah, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. We'd like to see that. At least I would. So. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and share my screen real quick and, and show you those results. Hey, Edie, could we also remind people how to get to the classes? I'm not sure that was... Uh, there was an email. Was, yeah, yeah, there was an email that went out at 11 o'clock, and it has the link, but it's just to josephknightfamily.org. There'll be a banner right on the front page, and if you click on that banner, it takes you to the schedule of events for this reunion, and the classes are all right on there. So you can just click on those links and, and go to which class you want. And again, these are pre-recorded classes, so if you don't do it now, uh, which we hope you will, um, you, should, you can do it later as well. Okay, so most of the people that are coming today, oh, let's, let's go ahead and get, come on. Sorry, my screen is just saying, where do we wanna go? So most, that came and joined today are from Lydia. 71% are from Lydia, 28% are from Sally. Starting with Sally first, uh, we went right to Samuel because that was the only child. Those that came through Samuel and Caroline, we have eight, pretty well evenly divided between Lydia, Sally, and Emma. So those are um, the ones that came from there. Through Samuel and, and Lara Modvina, the majority are from Samuel Carlos. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Way to go, my family. We also have some from Newell and from Edith. Okay, from Newell and Lydia, which child do you come through? The majority are coming through the Palmer branch today. Way to go, Palmers. Very impressed with you guys. We also have James Philander. We have some from Joseph, Newell. Lydia and Jesse. And of course, Hiram passed away, uh, so we didn't have any from there. So, a little bit of everybody coming from Lydia's kids through Sally and Zamira Palmer, the Palmer group you can see there, which grandchild. Um, we did not have any that had uh, the George Asel. We're so we got to work on that family because we didn't have anybody respond back from that family. From James Philander and Elizabeth, you can see that we have quite a few there. Those that didn't die as a child, we had most of them, other than the, Ar I hope I say it right, Artanesia. We didn't have any from theirs or from Lydia um, that responded from James Philander. From Joseph, Ether, and Jane, way to go, ours a family. Half of you, so two are from that. And then one from Roxy and one from Jesse. From Newell and Jane's family, we had three responses and they all came through Newell, the Newell Jr. Lydia and Zhang Young, we actually had one. I'm way excited. I would love to talk to that descendant because we would love to find out more about Lydia and, and John Young. She's the one, they went to Mexico and she stayed in Mexico and, and actually died and is buried in Mexico and, and he came back to the US. So we would love to learn more about that family. And Jesse and Amanda, 75% come through Jenny Pearl. And then 25% are through uh, Jesse Jr. So those are the results. That's what we have from, from those who actually went on and did the little survey and told us where, which family you came through. Great, thanks, Edie. Hey, I wanted to make a comment real quick. Somebody was wondering about the class links on the website, and I was just going there myself to see. Um, so it, when you click on the, the night website, um, you'll come up with a screen that shows 2020 night reunion, but you'll click on that, and then it'll give you a little agenda. At the bottom of the agenda, there's just a, the word classes. If you click on classes, it gives you all of the classes and descriptions. Now the first class, the Knights and the Doctrine and Covenants, Stories Behind the Verses, is not, uh, that link is not working. It's not giving uh, usable information. Um, the second one, Take a Night Family Road Trip, is supposed to be a link to a video and um, 
it doesn't look like it's linked yet. That, that one is linked on the YouTube page because it okay. was a video. We weren't able to link it on the website. So the link should take you to a, a YouTube page. Great. And then the rest of them, except the last one, all have links that'll take you to a, uh, a set of a document, basically uh, like a PowerPoint that you can scroll, scroll through and read through. Um, anything that's speaking, um, that you want to hear and, and listen to someone speak, that would be on the YouTube page. And I guess the la number 11 on that is where to learn more about doing family history. So that's just a suggestion to go um, other places. There's no, there's no PDF link on that one quite yet. So Can someone show us again how to find the YouTube videos? Yeah, let's see. Should I share my screen here? And on the YouTube videos, that email that came out with all the class links and everything on there as well, it has a, a link right on there that you can click to go to YouTube. But if you go just to the main YouTube and search nighttime stories or yeah, nighttime stories, then it pulls up and you can subscribe. If, again, that link is in the email that, that you should have all received at 11 o'clock. Okay, so I just found a link to one of the uh, Goodnight Stories, and under that link is a place where you can subscribe. And correct me if I'm wrong, once you've subscribed, you can go to the Nighttime Stories YouTube channel, and that's where you'll find uh, the videos. So did that help? Yes, that helps. Thank you. Great. So it's a it's a work in progress. We're still uploading things and and uh, making sure everything is there and works. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of good content already, and we encourage people to add content. It just loaded the link in the chats. You may not be able to click on it if you came in through the browser, but you can copy and paste it. And that will take you right to the main, the Nighttime Stories homepage, if you will. And then you'll be able to see all of the, the different stories on there. So while no one's talking, I just want to tell you all that have arranged all this. This is so exciting to me. It's the first time I've ever been a part of this reunion. And I just think all these resources are awesome. Thank you. It's the wave of the future. And uh, it's great because, it, like you said, it involves a lot more people that might not have ever attended in person. So we are, are, are thankful to be part of that and hope that this will continue on strongly. We will plan another reunion, though, in two years where people can come. So. <laughs> We don't want COVID to win. No, but for those of us who can't make it, this was an yeah. awesome component of a reunion. Thank you. I want to thank everyone too. Uh, I've really enjoyed the reunion so far. And uh, so thank you. You're welcome. I speak on behalf of many people, Edie and Casey and Rod and the Mangums and Carolyn and so many people behind the scenes that have that have helped put this together and we're grateful for all of the uh, little uh, clips that people sent in. Um, that's really fun to, to see who people are and where they come from. We have Anna's family joining us again but I would love anyone who has on a reunion t-shirt kind of sit up let's see what what t-shirts we have. James has the original 
I see one from 2016. Veronica has a 2016. Uh, Debbie, 2014. Wow, those are awesome. Okay, what other t-shirts do we have on here? Sorry, I'm trying to get to the next page to see who else do we have that has on t-shirts. I, I recognize so many of your names. I know a lot of you were, um, have, have come to reunions in the past. Oh, James has, we saw his. We have the, the twins, I'm um, not, the cousins that sent in their cute video where they were wearing their shirts. Um, but I think they are still in a breakout room. Colleen, you've been to a lot of reunions. Do you have your shirt on? Let's see. I think she's still working on audio. It's no, so exciting. I, oh. I have been to a few reunions, but I didn't purchase a shirt. Okay. But I recognized your name. You've been, to, you, Margie. Oh, Margie's looks like she's probably gone to lunch. She's been to a few. Debbie, who do you have with you? This is my sister, Carol. And I just put her name on there. She couldn't get on on her own, so we went in through mine. And luckily, I remember her, Edie, because I couldn't have gotten in otherwise. It was through hers that I had signed in. <laughs> and, and I am so sorry about all of the hiccups this morning. Technology it's, is amazing, but sometimes it can just be so frustrating. But I'm so glad that we were able to get everybody in and that wanted to be here and that you can all join us. It's so fun to see so many people. I wanted to see, did Chris, was Chris ever able to join us, Chris Knight? I haven't seen his name pop up. He's actually from Singapore and he said it was gonna be three o'clock in the morning, but he was gonna try to get up and join us. Um, <laughs> and I kept watching to see if that popped through because that would be really exciting to, to have people. I know Shura hasn't been able to come to any. She lives back east. Is it Massachusetts, I think? And so that I was exciting to hear from her. How many, is this the very first time that you like joined us? That was my big question. Ah! <laughs> that is so exciting to see so many. That's really exciting. But now you know. We have I'm, every I'm, this is Shura. I'm in Delaware, by the way. Delaware. That I knew it was someplace back there. I couldn't remember. <laughs> we had, I talked to so many people and there were some from Massachusetts and some from Maryland and Delaware. There was a couple from New York that were going to join us for the first time. So that was exciting. It's so exciting. So if you guys need to go and take a break, but you don't want to have to log out and come back in, you're more than welcome to just leave your computer there. Just mute your video and your audio and go take a break. I'm gonna actually put a video on. Uh, it's a history of the night reunions of, that go way back to 1988. You're more than welcome to grab something and, and watch the video while you eat if you wanna do that. Um, James? Yeah, just uh, maybe this was mentioned already, but for those who uh, weren't able to get into the Zoom meeting originally, um, it was recorded, right? And we can post that recording for them to see that later. Yes. Great. And I, and I forgot to mention at the beginning that it would be interesting to know where everybody descended from Newell, if they added a, another name to their Newell descendancy, that would be interesting to see where everybody's coming from. But anyway, we appreciate everybody's um, time and interest. Thank and you. James, this meeting has also been recorded, but I was a little slow on the draw. And so the first Five minutes or so were not recorded, but the rest of it has been recorded. Can okay. you just start over again, James? <laughs> I'll give the first five minutes. 